Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz, President and CEO of the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. We're joined today by Brian Lewis. He is a lobbyist. You may or may not like the sound of that. We love it because Brian's a great friend of the CVB. Uh, he has a company called New Frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, Brian, thanks for joining us here. We're here we on remote. We're at the North Carolina Travel Institute Association Leadership Conference mm -hmm. uh, for a couple days here. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule here at the conference. And uh, welcome to Paradise in the Pines. Thank you for having me, Phil. I'm so excited to be on the podcast. I have listened to the podcast, and I'm honored to be here. Awesome. Well, we watch yours as well, so we'll talk a little, dive into a little bit of that as well. So talk about New Frame. Uh, you are a lobbyist. You work with the General Assembly. We'll get into occupancy tax and all that, but what is New Frame? Uh, you are the owner principal of that company. Yeah, we are a small uh, lobbying firm where office, our office is in downtown Raleigh. We are celebrating 10 years of existence. Oh, congratulations, yeah, that's thank, great. Yeah, we, uh, we represent the tourism industry. The North Carolina Travel Industry Association is one of our clients. We work on a lot of issues from uh, Coalition Against Domestic Violence, Sexual Assault, Head Start, whoever comes mm. through the door, if they're doing good work like the tourism industry right. is, uh, we're here to help them at the General Assembly. We lobby on their issues with state legislators. In fact, we've got some legislators coming later this evening to join right. us for dinner. Uh, but it is a, uh, I have uh, Sky David is my partner. Right. Uh, we also have Christy Jones, who uh, works with us. She'll be here later tonight and just proud to represent the tourism industry. Are you from North Carolina originally? I okay. am. I am. I'm born and somewhat raised down in Duplin County. So if you're heading yeah. down to Wine, wine Country. Yeah, wine Country, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Muscadine wine, yeah. Scuppernong wine. If you ate bacon this morning, <laughs> chances are it came out of our county. We process about 35,000 hogs a day. Right. Yeah. So you're involved in politics and, you know, again, it, it's you either love it or hate it, just like the Yankees or Duke <laughs> basketball. Um, what made you want to get into politics? You know, I have always, you know, I was that kid that read Under the Dome in the News and Observer as a kid. Mm. I loved politics. I, my grandfather played a very big role in my life, and he was always talking politics. He was also talking golf, too, Phil. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, it was one of those things. We weren't really politically active at all, but mm. my grandfather watched politics as if he was watching a college football game. It was sport to him. Right. He was... Uh, it was one of those things where my grandfather was a Republican, my grandmother was a Democrat. I used to joke that they drove 20 minutes into town to go vote just to cancel <laughs> each other out. But, you know, grew up in, in and around it talking to him. And so when I went to college, I really had no intention of hmm. going into political science or anything like that. I was undeclared. And finally, my professor said, Brian, you got to choose something here. And uh, I was like, well, I guess I've taken a lot of political science classes. Uh, maybe I'll go with that. And from there, graduated and ended up just immersed into North Carolina politics. So more deeply involved, as you said, with tourism. We hear from Whit Tuttle from Visit NC and how well the tourism industry is doing. I mean, our visitor spending numbers were three quarter of a billion dollars. I mean, that's the small potatoes to Charlotte and Durham, but for, for little old Mo Moore County, that's huge. So we're doing well. Obviously, Pinehurst Resort, the U.S. Open, we'll get into all that. But I mean, you're involved in tourism. How well is tourism doing in North Carolina? It is doing great. And, you know, we came out of the pandemic, I should say going into the pandemic, very fearful about what that meant to our industry. And it did negatively impact a lot of our industry, but we found that tourism grew in the coastal areas, your area, Western North Carolina. One of the Carolina. best things ever happened to yeah, golf. Yeah, I mean, so folks wanted to get outdoors. Yeah. Folks wanted to get away from home. A lot of folks were being, they were able to work remotely, so that helped. We still have some glitches that we need to work on. Uh, workforce development is a huge issue. It continues yeah, to be a absolutely. huge challenge. Uh, we actually have a senator coming tonight who owns a chain of restaurants along the coast. And while 
tourism has been booming at the coast, he says, I just can't find employees. Yeah. You know, he's paying it's the same everywhere. Yeah, paying them above market rate. Yeah. They're calling in or they're just not showing up. That continues to be a challenge. But as far as visitor spending goes, I mean, we are well at $33 billion in visitor spending mm -hmm. in North Carolina. Uh, we are seeing uh, conferences are back, conventions are back. We're at a conference right yeah. now recording this podcast. Uh, but we do have some challenges. It's, it's not perfect out there. Workforce development is a big issue. Affordable housing. Yeah, affordable housing. Being able to, you got a thriving uh, community in Asheville. Pinehurst, mm -hmm. the, the beach, and, and you want to be able to take care of your employees, it's, it is a competitive labor market. You were closely, uh, and you know Senator Tom McGinnis uh, yeah. down there. He's been instrumental in getting some dollars. I think it was $850,000 recently for a theater in Robbins and, and I think another six fifty, eight fifty dollars total. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he, he is keenly aware of the tourism industry. But when you look at what would and visit NC have to spend, $12 million, and you look at the bordering states, and I tell people that ask me questions about the state of North Carolina or what we're doing in Piners, like, what does miracles with $12 million when Virginia has, I think, what, 48 million yeah. and South Carolina has $50 million yeah. a year to spend? Let's take, let's go inside the General, uh, General Assembly and the legislature. How do we get more dollars for tourism so WIC can spend more money on getting more people to come to North Carolina? Yeah, it is a challenge because I think they look at the numbers and they see the growth that we have had. Just take it from 2004 when I think we were at $14 billion in, in mm -hmm. visitor spending, and now we're well over double that. So we're sometimes a victim of our success. They see the growth in the industry, but what we try to do is position it like, you know, Virginia Beach is being very aggressive in their marketing. Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. Myrtle Beach, I believe, spends more in advertising than our coastal communities combined. Wow. And so we're trying to compare ourselves to those markets without, <laughs> here's the challenge. Well, we don't want to be Myrtle Beach. Yeah. We don't yeah. want to be Virginia Beach. We want to see our coastal areas, our mountain, our golf courses. We love the way they are. So it's one of those things where it's a balancing act in how you talk about them. One of the things that we've been trying to really push to legislators, and they're going to see it tonight, that it's more than the coast, it's more than the mountains, it's even more than our golf courses, which are pristine and mm -hmm. wonderful, and people come from all over the world. But we have wonderful rural tourism in North Carolina, and they need to invest in those communities. All 100 counties have something to see, whether it's a day trip or you want to spend a weekend or right. you want to spend a week trying to really get out and promote what's going on in Robbins or what's going on in Duplin County and Keenansville, the old courthouse, the, the, the beauty of the architecture. I think people are, you know, getting back into being in the history and mm -hmm. what's authentic mm -hmm. and what's real, getting out, kind of maybe to some aspect, getting out of the big cities. I know this year, 2023, is the year of the trail in North Carolina, which was a huge initiative for us. And I know across the state, in fact, they're going to extend that into next year. So you're right. I mean, outside of just, you know, the golf and one of our hashtags is more than just golf because people come there for, even though Seagrove is half in Moore County, they still come there and they stay overnight in Moore County. Rockingham, I'm on a committee down there along with Jim McLaurin, who I'm sure you know, uh, number two with EDPNC, uh, Economic Development for the State, to get a race back to the Rock. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, we didn't get the all star race. Uh, I think it was kind of cool that North Wilkesboro got it again, so it wasn't just kind of like a one hit wonder kind of thing. Uh, but I think we're real close to, to getting NASCAR back to Rockingham. What are you hearing in Raleigh? Yeah, there has been a lot of attention paid at the General Assembly recently as it pertains to attracting these kinds of events. We recently passed a bill uh, that's going to allow for sports gambling, and I know that's a controversial issue, but the, if you look at where the General Assembly wants that money to go, it is to compete for a Super Bowl, to compete yeah. for a race, to uh, compete for more uh, internationally known golf tournaments. They want to bring that to the state. Yeah. And uh, they have really, if you've looked at where they're earmarking money, it is to make us a competitor. As we know, competing for these games, competing with these leagues, you have to put some money on the table. It's right. not just like, hey, yeah, Charlotte, Pinehurst, you've got to show them that you've got skin in the game too. It's interesting because if you can have a Super Bowl in New York City, I get it. It's New York. That's where, you know, all the Fortune 500 companies, all the money is. 
Yeah, there's a bowl in Detroit. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and Charlotte would be awesome. But I think I saw you at the, the Visit NC conference earlier this year, and I said, We've already got a Super Bowl in North Carolina. It's called the U.S. Open. <laughs> and so, and so we, we've got that next year, uh, Brian. So, uh, you know, and when you were probably much in the know when the USGA was kind of going through, uh, I remember, I'll never forget the day, it was September 9, 2020, when they announced that the USGA was kind of bringing Golf House Pioneers mm -hmm. uh, to, to life, uh, yeah. a second headquarters there. What was that like when you were hearing about it uh, firsthand, perhaps in the legislature and behind closed doors and, and, uh, and the eventuality of that? I mean, you know, we've, I think I saw the press release, U.S. opens between now and 2047, $2 billion economic impact yeah. of the state of North Carolina. And, and just to, th there was a lot of excitement. There's a lot of power within rural communities of North Carolina. And, and that is exactly what they were saying, Phil, is not only bringing it to the area, the, the way it's going to have a spillover effect into rural Moore County, how it's going to even go into Harnett County, how it's going to go yeah. down to Fayetteville, just that economic impact of hotels filling up, restaurants filling up, people being in our community, and they come for the event. They come back because they felt something special. Yeah. The wonderful food that we have, authentic mm -hmm. barbecue, where you can't find it anywhere else, really, but rural North Carolina. It's funny because when people ask me what I do for a living, my 15-second elevator speech is, I get as many people from around the world to come here and spend all their money and then go home. <laughs> right. So when people say, there are too many people moving to more County, I was like, that's not me. Right. I mean, but I do understand if people come there and they fall in love with, the, you look at a picture from the village of Pioneers, it looks exactly like it did 125 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, when we do grow, and, and I'm sure you know Natalie Hawkins, our head of economic development in Moore County, you know, we're going to grow from 100,000 residents to 170 by 2050. Yeah. The area is going to grow whether tourism is part of it or not, because right. First Health is there. You know, we can talk about, I mean, talk about the impact of what just north of Moore County with VinFast and the Toyota plant, the chip manufacturer, the, the Carolina Corps from 421 from Greensboro to Fayetteville, Moore County is going to blow up. I oh, mean, yeah. already Carth Carthage already is, and I know they're working on infrastructure in the northern end of the county because it's coming. Just, just talk about that, that growth just between Raleigh and Moore County. Yeah, so one of the vestiges of having a robust tourism industry in North Carolina is, yeah, we're having the visitors come in, but folks are saying, you know, this wouldn't be a bad state to retire in. Right. People are coming in and saying, this wouldn't be a bad place to put VinFast, which is the, uh, the hybrid or electric car that's coming in. Vietnamese EV yeah, manufacturer, right, right. yeah. So we are seeing, a, and it, it was announced again, CNBC ranked us number one for business two mm -hmm. years in a row. We are seeing exponential growth in our manufacturing, something that we have really had to kind of claw back from. If you go back to the mid-90s and the trade deals and all of that, we lost a lot of our building things in North Carolina. Mm. So we're seeing in rural Chatham County, we're seeing VinFast say, we're going to put a plant there. Apple coming to Research Triangle Park. And the housing explosion we mm -hmm. have seen as it's moved down from Wake County into Moore County, because what it's about a 30-minute, 30 35-minute 30 drive from it, the Triangle area to, to from, Pinehurst. I mean, we're just a couple miles away, a mile or yeah. two from the airport. I mean, door-to-door. -door. I live in Whispering Pines, which is right by the Moore County Airport. Uh, one hour, exactly. From yeah. my door to the RDO yeah. Airport, one hour. I mean, that's yeah. it's a quick trip. Quality of life, quality education, quality universities. We are just a hotbed for growth, and we're going to continue to see this growth I believe, into the next few decades. Uh, we've seen it with just the, the revenue that has been brought to the state. We just passed a budget that is over $30 billion. I remember when I started the General Assembly, I think we were at $17 billion huh. for our total budget. Yeah. This is, I mean, just folks are moving in. 50 people, we're in Wake County right now, Phil, 50 people moved in today huh. to Wake County. And we're seeing that a lot of folks are wanting to get out into the country. Folks are wanting to live yeah. outside of the metro area. I know people that work for Apple that yeah. drive, they, they don't have to be in the office two days a week. Yeah. They love living in Moore County, the rural, you know, rural atmosphere versus being in the big city. They don't mind the hour long drive or 45 minute drive to carry. I mean, it's, it's simple. Big plot of land usually, uh, more affordable housing right. for sure. 
great schools and access to the Triangle area, uh, to the coast, to the mountains. It is, you're centrally located in such a great place in this state. We've heard of Build Back Better, but Brian does a podcast <laughs> called do politics better right am i, am ah, I correct that so, is right <laughs> so, that's right trying to make a little, a little <laughs> <laughs> phrase there but but anyway talk about i mean you're, you're involved uh, you've got a great podcast uh some really great conversations with obviously on the political side but talk about how you got into that and talk about your podcast and who, who do you feature on there well thank you for allowing us to do that we host a weekly podcast uh we have a new uh podcast coming out tomorrow morning and what we've done with the podcast is we want folks to know these legislators on a more personal level. So we work with 170 legislators, Republicans, Democrats, rural, urban, black, white, mm -hmm. uh, all walks of life. And we bring them into the office and sit down for about a 30 minute conversation, much like this podcast. And we don't talk about political issues. We talk about who they are as people. And we try to alternate Republican, Democrat, back and forth uh, with our guest every week. And our hope is that, you know, we're living in a time, Phil, where uh, politics is not necessarily a good word. Uh, the civility in politics has certainly taken a decline since my grandfather was talking to me about politics. Uh, yeah, I think yesterday in Congress, yeah, I, I, I was just going to say, Tony Bean almost came to fisticuffs in Congress. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I, I, the senator pretty much. Well, the much, one guy fights MMA. Yeah, 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 yeah. The senator uh, wanted to fight <laughs> some Oklahoma. guy testifying. And uh, I mean, we're living in a, I mean, don't even get me started on social media, <laughs> what you see on Twitter. But we think that if you get to know each other, if you get to know what makes a Tom McInnes kit, uh, tick, mm. if you get to know uh, John Bell, if you get to know Allison Dahl, these are representatives in the General Assembly, where did you come from? Uh, you know, tell us about your childhood growing up. We had this one legislator come on, uh, Jimmy Dixon from my home county, Duplin County. Uh, really, uh, he's, he's an elderly legislator. He listens to the podcast every week, and he told us this most heartwarming story about his mother raising him up as a single mom in the 1950s and 60s and just it was it was I, we had no idea people called us like, had no idea jimmy dixon grew up this way uh doesn't know who his dad is never met his dad and uh you know we got to know him on a personal level which helps us understand him when he's taking votes on issues we know that he cares deeply about Duplin County. It's not exactly, you know, the, the centerpiece of North Carolina's tourism industry, but his, his pride in the 35,000 hogs they process yeah. every day, the jobs that, that that industry creates. And so we just want to foster uh, a political conversation that gets beyond the I'm right and you're wrong. Right. This is who I am. Um, we asked them to talk about the other party. Well, give us some examples of where you've worked with the other party. And it's amazing, Phil. You know, folks, mm -hmm. when you get to know someone on a personal level, it's kind of hard to call them a name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of like your neighbor. Your neighbor, you might not agree with them on everything, but you're Although not. Although I think Representative Comer called uh, one, one of the uh, Democrat uh, Congressman yesterday, a Smurf. Yeah, uh, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. And he was wearing a blue suit. So yeah, we we just feel that people need to do politics better, and that is, you know, hold to your convictions. Uh, but we can find things that we agree on. Uh, Representative Allison Dahl, a pink-haired liberal Democrat here in Wake County. Uh, Senator Todd Johnson, who's going to be here tonight, a conservative from Union County, mm -hmm. they met through some of our Do Politics Better podcast functions, and they got to know each other, and now they're the best of friends, huh. and they work on legislation together. That's now, they great. disagree on yeah. these issues and those issues, but they come together when it comes to ABC modernization. Big issue at the General Assembly. I'm not going to ask you to defend politics, but you know, we all see the national level. I mean, it seems like... In Spend our money, do things that help us as yeah. Americans. Not asking to defend what's going on in D.C. Because, right. uh, as you said, you know, when, when you talk to Senator McGinnis, the guy is super cool guy. I mean, he, you'd want to run through a brick wall when you hear him speak. Yeah. Um, Representative Jackson, uh, you know, Representative Bowles when he he was oh, in yeah. the legislature, great, great guy. guy. Uh, we see him all the time mm -hmm. with, with his business there and, and throughout Moore County. Um, you know, it, 
again, the, like you said, these are real people uh, that, you know, once you have a relationship with them, you understand who they are. Yeah. Not necessarily to defend politics, but but talk about how, if you were to say somebody's so tainted on politics, what would you, what would, how would you try to bring them back to, to center? It's like, hey, let's give this a chance. I'll tell you what I tell my wife, because she follows <laughs> politics through social media in the media. And she'll say, I can't believe this. And I say, that is not who they are. What you see on social media, even how they put out their message or someone is portraying them. I said, you know, it, you should really go meet him or her. Come with me to an event, I'll say. I, I think that a lot of folks, I would say, you know, you don't believe, I don't want to say there's fake news. They're, the news is doing a good job. But I, I do believe you're only getting one dimension of that person. You're getting their press release. You're getting mm. their floor speech. You're not seeing behind the scenes that this person really cares about their state or they care about their district or they care about this issue and getting to know them. And I know not everyone has the luxury of being down in Raleigh, and I'm not suggesting you want to spend too much time at the building, but getting to know them on a personal level, realizing that these are human beings, things that you read on the Internet ask yourself, could this really be true that they hate America so much? <laughs> you know, right. Does anyone go to run for Congress or the legislature because they hate their state? No, they think they're doing good work. And it's incumbent upon us to give them perspective. So when you talk to Senator McInnes or Representative Ben Moss, or you're talking to Representative Jamie Bowles the, uh, before he left, you talk about what's going on in Pinehurst. You talk about what it brings, and it's up to us to inform them. Mm -hmm. You have to engage. I would encourage anyone to get engaged in the process. Don't check out because then you're just leaving it to the fighting and the right. folks that you know. There's a lot. There's an industry about just stirring up controversy. Being that person that's sending out that bombastic tweet, they're doing and it because they get clicks. I was just going to say, because yeah. they get the clicks. They get the clicks, and the more clicks they get, they, you know, they might have their own podcast where people are like, yeah, I want to be on there because it's crazy, and they get a lot of views. But you know, pay attention to the folks who are keeping it civil. It's, they're out there. You mentioned Senator Johnson, right, mm -hmm. uh, from Union yeah, County. Yeah. Um, he's got a tie to Pinehurst that I found interesting that you mentioned to me, that he owns a cigar shop. He does. Um, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's right there. If, if you're watching this uh, at 15501 where meets Highway 1, mm -hmm. it's called The Cigar Shop. Yeah, The Cigar Shop. And, in fact, if you go to Senator Johnson's office at the General Assembly, he has a humidor in his office, and he will give you a cigar from his <laughs> cigar shop. He he is a great guy. He's an ins he owns an insurance company, hmm. but he has uh, a few cigar uh, chain. I don't want to say chain. Uh, he has a few cigar stores. I think one's even down towards uh, Myrtle Beach area, uh, Union County, and then your way. Um, yeah, and and you know, Senator Johnson is a great guy. He is one of those folks that. You get to know him. He's got a story about something going on in his community. He really, um, he really wants to hear from regular people. He's not one of those guys that's at the General Assembly and just wants to drink the Kool-Aid. He would rather puff on a cigar with you <laughs> and talk about what's on your mind. And he has his opinions, but uh, and you'll learn something from him. But uh, yeah, great guy. So Senator Johnson. Uh, We'd love to smoke cigars, and if you want to go play golf sometime, just uh, just <laughs> give us a call at the CVB there in Pinehurst on the Pines Aberdeen, and we'll be happy to take you out. Yeah. Um, talk about Pinehurst. I mean, you, you get down there, um, you, you travel the state, obviously, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, how often do you get down to Pinehurst? I know you like to play a little bit of golf. I do play a little bit of golf. I'm one of those golfers, though, Phil. I feel really intimidated by the Pinehurst golf courses <laughs> because I'm such a terrible golf player. But I'm one of those terrible golf players that loves to play golf. And I, what I love most about it is the social aspect yeah. of it. I love getting out on the course. And, you know, if I could go back in time, I would give anything right now just to play a round of par three golf with my grandfather. I remember that. Go, old... go to the cradle. Yes. Yeah. The place to go. The <laughs> par three course. Uh, in fact, I played that course. I'll tell you a quick story. On Christmas Day, I'm single, don't have kids. I went there on Christmas Day and I said, hey, 
I was the only person there. I was on Christmas Day about 8.30 in the morning. I was like, hey, my dad had passed away. He was a scratch mm -hmm. golfer. And I said, I want to play a ball for my, with my, for my dad. And so I'll hit one for me and one for him. I had almost four hole-in-ones on my dad's ball. Are you serious? And I shot four under on my dad's ball. I shot even par. And it's like, my dad beat me again. I, I swear to God, on the cradle, my dad was there on wow. Christmas Day that year. It was, That's incredible. Was, yeah, so I, I highly recommend go there. You, you can have that spiritual experience I have, or you can drink the transfusions and have a different type of experience. Uh -huh. uh, you can play barefoot, have a great time, smoke a cigar. Yeah. Uh, Tom Passion would be uh, love to see out there having fun. I love a cigar on the golf course, by the way. <laughs> it, it, my wife uh, does not like it when I come back smelling like cigar smoke, but um, I do love to play golf. I Again, if I can shoot on... I'm embarrassing myself here. If I can shoot under 100, it's a great day for me. Well, there are 38 golf courses in Moore County, uh, so there's one for you, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. I always feel like I'm I, I'm very conscientious. My grandfather said, you never hold folks up. So I'm very conscientious of uh, how much time I spend <laughs> well, looking good. for Keep, my ball. Pace of play is very important. <laughs> so, it is the most important, my <laughs> right. grandfather told me. So I would venture to say you probably weren't smoking a cigar when you're on your bicycle doing the mountains to the coast. Uh, that's pretty amazing. I mean, I, I played Biners number 10 last week. Got a privilege to go out there before they open it next spring. I got a cramp in my right calf just uh, from walking i can't imagine riding from the mountains to the coast over what a seven day period what was that like uh, it was an incredible experience so we started uh, it was the first week in october started at banner elk now uh, I told you, I'm from eastern North Carolina, Duplin County. It's flat. Yeah, flat. <laughs> uh, hills to us are a headwind. You know? <laughs> so um, I, I live in the Raleigh area, so I was training on this route that I thought had hills. And I said, you know, we call it Big Woods. Going into Chatham County, I said, that's my, I'm going to train here because i got to get ready for this bike ride. Phil, when I rode in Banner Elk, we were riding from Banner Elk to Blowing Rock, eventually trying to get to Wilkesboro on our first day. I felt like someone turned the world upside down. I have never seen mountains, or I'd seen mountains like that. I just never rode them on right. my bicycle. So, uh, obviously, as, we, as the week progressed, uh, it took us to Emerald Isle eventually. But we stopped off Wilkesboro, Winston-Salem, Mebane. Then from Mebane, we went to Henderson, from Henderson to Tarboro, Tarboro to Kinston, Kinston to mm. Emerald Isle. So every day was a stop. Visit NC and Cycle NC does a magnificent job with this bike ride. It's not a race, it's a ride. Yeah. You've got, they, they think of everything. Huh. And, and, you know, from your hotels, you book your hotel, they, they go and pick up your bags, take them to the next hotel. They feed you breakfast, feed you wow. dinner, oh, at, uh, a rest stop every 15 miles. And what was so wonderful is that the route was a rural route. So once we got out of, you know, Winston and Meb and in between, we're going through rural North Carolina and just the hospitality yeah. of North Carolinians churches opening up their church doors feeding us mm. breakfast for the for the uh, first 15 miles uh, sweet potatoes being served as we went into nash county barbecue once wow. we got to kinston <laughs> uh beer gardens every night uh we had uh buses taking us because there was a uh, the finish line you would you would park your bike you'd go to your hotel but buses running constantly hmm. into community. Wow. So it's a lot could, of logistics. Oh, it was. They yeah. do such, I can't recommend it enough. It's an annual ride every fall. Anybody, anybody can do it. Anybody can do yeah. it. I think it's like 700 bucks, and that's pretty much your package deal. They, that covers most of your yeah. logistics. And uh, we, had, we were lucky to have great weather. It's like, you know, start our ride at 60 degrees. Usually it's about 75 by the end of the day. It was just perfect yeah. weather for riding. State troopers escort you, so it's a very safe mm. route. They have it all marked. They have an app you can download to tell you to take oh, a wow. left turn in a mile. Okay. And uh, I met so many great people from Silva to uh, up in Dare County, met a friend, uh, you know, he was, uh, wasn't my friend until this ride, but you know, you get to know folks, you're, yeah. you're in misery together. <laughs> it's at least the first couple well, days. What, what happens if you get a cramp or you get a flat tire? You're like, see you later. We're going. Cycle NC has a sag wagon, which is pretty ah. much a wagon that just goes up and down the course. I had a tire blow on my way to Henderson. 
patch me right up. Uh, they will even pick you up and take you to the next rest stop if you can't take any more. Okay. Luckily, I was I was healthy the whole time. Well, you're a triathlete as yeah. well, yeah, right? Yeah, so you're in pretty good shape. I, well, I'm, I was in better <laughs> shape when I did triathlon. But this has been a bucket list for me since they started this some 23 years ago. Okay. And I've always wanted to do it, but the General Assembly, you know, that schedule's always kind of weird. In fact, Phil, I didn't even know if I was going to do it this year because we still didn't have a budget until right. like a week before this ride. But I had signed up last winter, and it, the stars aligned, and I was able to do it. It is definitely one of those things that I will always remember, and I will remember the hospitality and the sights awesome. of rural North Carolina. Yeah. What a beautiful state. We'd like to get that through Moore County. You, you should. Yeah. You should make a bid for it. I know that they're talking to folks about organizing next year's ride. And We'd I love think to do that. Stopping in Pinehurst yeah, that would be, be cool. s- I mean, just to go from the finish line, being able to go into the village and have a beer, a good meal. Uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun and it's about 800 riders and some of them mm. have family with them so yeah. you're talking about an infusion of guests mm-hmm. in the middle of the week usually it is during fall peak golf season well so there is finding that. hotel rooms could be could be an issue but we were certainly going to pursue that and see if we can get it coming yeah. through uh, through Moore County for sure a couple more things real quick and we'll let you go uh, you mentioned the budget uh, the casino well sports betting is starting January 1st I, I, Vince Cellino with NCTIA executive director awesome guy uh, you work with mm-hmm. um he said there might be a little bit of a hang up as of january 1st but the casinos that came out of the budget so yeah. where does that stand is that going to be revisited because i know people say oh we've heard there's going to be one in piners no it's you know i think it's what um rocky mount um yeah robinson county rockingham county north of greensboro and Anson maybe county down your Anson, way. uh a little bit down your yeah way. yeah same between here and charlotte yeah yeah so uh, this is something that the senate really wanted the house kind of wanted it but they i think they got cold feet at the end a lot of controversy around casinos you know at tourism we work on you know <laughs> there are a few uh, hot button issues casinos abc modernization that's another mm. uh but uh yeah senator berger in fact i heard him on another podcast this morning saying that he was going to make a push again in 2024 he feels that this is about competing with states around us so you know, Senator Berger is was actually born in Danville, North Carolina. He yeah, lives in Eden, North casinos, Carolina. Casinos, yeah. yeah. So he sees those okay. North Carolina plates going Heading over across the, the border. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking big revenue. Again, this is something that they want to bring to North Carolina. And he calls them tourism zones, I believe, because they got to spend $500 million to start a casino. So that means hotels and restaurants on this compound property. Mm. Um I think you're going to see this again pop up next year in the short session. Uh, we'll look forward to that. Yeah. Um, and then one last thing, uh, you're here at NCTIA. What's the big issue? You're getting ready to go into a board meeting, uh, talk about a few things. Uh, we got a big session uh, all day tomorrow on Thursday uh, before we wrap up for the holidays. What's the big issue you guys are going to discuss uh, going into the holidays here for next year? Yeah, we always have concerns around the occupancy tax. That we didn't it, even talk about all yeah, that. And yeah. we're getting ready to raise ours to 6%, and we're hoping. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. Yeah, so some communities in North Carolina are wanting to revisit the whole concept mm. of the occupancy tax. You know, it was originally designed, and, and you guys are going through this, that, yes, we welcome this tax on our hotels. However, we would like the money to be dedicated to tourism, right. not only tourism expenses that come with visitors coming to our community, but promoting this community. So it is, whenever there's money on the table, you know this, Phil, whenever there's money on the table, there's going to be folks that say, yeah, I'd like a little bit of that. (laughs) And what we're saying is, no, look, guys, we are asking for the tax because we want to promote tourism. Tourism is the second biggest industry in North Carolina. And Moore County, I mean, our board will tell you, we want want those to be for major capital projects. Every survey we do is they want an amphitheater, uh, you know, 2,000 person amphitheater. Uh, Weymouth Center down there has designs to do something like that. Uh, there's some other things. We just did a grant program yeah. and awarded $821,000 to capital projects for government nonprofit. That's what they would be for. 
government, nonprofit, capital projects, and if it has to be one major project, that's what we'd like to do because we, we talked about the growth of Moore County and the Pinehurst area. You know, we want to be a part of that, and yeah. we could be a great partner with those governmental and, and nonprofit agencies. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of folks, and this is something we have to talk to legislators about, is we take tourism for granted, I think. I think we think because... Pinehurst is this wonderful destination where people come from all over the world to play golf. And that is all true, but they don't just come. They come because we tell them about it. Right. We go into their markets and we we show them photographs and video, and we're putting our, our, our games on TV. The U.S. Open would be televised around the world. <laughs> right. Great advertising. Yeah, it, it is. So you can't, you can't kill the program that is bringing visitors to Asheville, that is bringing visitors to Carolina Beach or to Greensboro Mm -hmm. or here to Raleigh. You've got to be able to tell that story. And we know that municipalities and counties have a lot of needs. There are other ways for them to find the resources to take care of those needs. We want this occupancy tax to be focused on that community. Keep it in the community to promote Mm -hmm. this job creating uh, industry. And I think what's great in North Carolina, and this may be in other states too, but I've seen in the five plus years I've been in in Pinehurst, is that, you know, we've got 100 counties, we all compete, but we all play nice in the sandbox together. We all reap the benefits. If somebody's going to go to Raleigh, they're probably going to come to Pinehurst. If they go to the coast, hey, let's go to the mountains this year. Let's go play golf. So, you know, we all reap the benefits. We're in a great state. From the mountains to the coast and and everywhere in between. I always tell Whit, we need more golf in the hype video. See a lot of mountains. See a lot of... (laughs) Let's get more than one golf (laughs) shot in that video. But I'm just... I just give them a hard time. But anyway, Brian Lewis, it's been a pleasure. Uh, As always, thank you for all you do in the legislature for occupancy tax for the state of North Carolina. And uh, come on down and smoke a cigar sometime. Well, I'll come play golf, too. All right. That sounds great. Well, if you want to learn more about tourism, go to homeofgolf.com, especially about the U.S. Open in 2024. If you want to watch our videos, including this podcast, go to our YouTube channel, which is Home of American Golf. And if you love our podcast, just search Paradise in the Pines on your favorite podcatcher. And uh, Brian, I'll, pod- I'll download yours if you download mine. I certainly will. For Brian Lewis, I'm Phil Words. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Paradise in the Pines. Did we do okay, Dan? We did good. <laughs> okay. Did we awesome. mess, did Thank we, you. Did-